I wanted to get a bit of backstory on on you about the love of music and how it began. And, and you grew up, didn't you, in what was, it seemed to me, to be a pretty musical house. I mean, you had, I have to say, actually, you, you sound like you had very cool laid-back parents. I mean, your mother with the guitar singing Grace Slick and Joplin and Hendrix. So she must have had some voice, by the way. I I I think so. I mean, I try to get her anytime we're in a bar together. There's a chance for her to get up on stage and try, but she's like, I can't sing anymore. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was her with an acoustic guitar was just always, she had this like 12 string that she put a bunch of money into and it was the only guitar she ever had. And um, her whole family, like she was from a really big family, is from a big family. Um, and a lot of them just kind of, and picked up the guitar. She's one of the younger ones, so she got it from her her older brothers and stuff. And um, yeah, after we moved on from from lullabies and kids tunes, she just started, yeah, playing me. I mean, it's a great branding, and... <laughs> isn't it? Because you you grow up listening to all of these amazing songs from yeah. incredible artists. I do love the fact that your your talent was obviously seen very early on because there's your grandmother marching you into <laughs> wow. neighbors houses yeah. and being told to perform so i mean how did that work i mean i have vague recollections of it but i do remember being yeah brought over to the neighbors and probably helped with you know stage fright <laughs> um and uh yeah i just I mean, there wasn't a moment I wasn't singing or didn't want to sing. So, you know, we go back old family videos and there's just like me forcing my si my siblings to like put on little concerts with when we yeah. have a camera, when we have a camcorder at home or whatever. And yeah. <laughs> so literally you are born to perform. I, I suppose so. I just don't remember a time when it, it wasn't like a part, even when I wasn't doing it professionally, when it wasn't a part of who I was, you know. Uh, and you, you love to sing big show tunes as well can you i mean i know there's a thing about yeah there's a rainbow uh but was you wasn't your favorite one of the uh ones it was called somewhere somewhere out there from the from that <laughs> disney the film american tale of it with the mouse <laughs> <laughs> that's um talking about yeah the videos on the camcorder we just i was at my brother's a couple of weeks ago and he was like look what i found and he had probably a usb stick with old family videos, and one was him and I doing a duet of somewhere out there from American Town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. So what were you listening to then when you were growing up? I mean, you know, we know what your mother was playing you, but yeah. did they have um, big music collections? And were you sort of regularly raiding those and going, wow, what is this? It, it was pretty eclectic, I think, in my house. Like, it, it, it was never like a focus on a particular genre, though my mom was like a massive Beatles fan. My dad had some BB King albums. Um, you know, Janis Joplin was a thing. Um, for me, Bette Midler was a huge early influence. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and then like, you know, Canadian K Katie Lang was played a lot, Brian Adams, and Bonnie Raitt. Um, so those were some of the stuff that was some of the things that were played around for me a lot. And then I, got really big into musical theater and yeah, it was more sad and then like just really kind of yeah. all over the place <laughs> yeah you were drawn to the the stage as well yeah. weren't you the uh the grade six wasn't it your first live um performance was a tale of tale of two lambs i'd say that was my first live performance in a leading role but i did previously play a mouse in a production of <laughs> uh lady in the tramp <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. who the hell was princess golly gotcha it's a good question i don't i've never heard of this musical before since it was clearly made for for children's school theater, i was looking for it because i thought well there might be something in here with a i don't know something blues related no yeah, i couldn't no, even school, find it school musical i don't i have no clue i haven't tried to look it out but i could sing some of it still which is crazy so with all of these interests obviously in, in in performing or everything what what was the call then for you to study human biology which you you did your degree in? where where did that come from i was a good student i really liked 
high school, especially. And I really loved, you know, aside from loving music, I loved science and math, just loved it. Um, and my dad was a, a chemical engineer. Um, so, you know, I had that, it was also, part of me was also just always to sing, but another part of me was always like, well, I'm going to go to university and get a degree. It was just kind of the natural way of things. Now I did, I did audition aside from applying for science programs at a few universities here. I did audition for an exchange program that had come up at the same time to go to a theater school in, uh, I think it was Norway <laughs> and I was running. Wow. Out. So if I had, a, if I had a gotten that, I, I would have taken off and gone to, to theater school. But for some reason that was the only, at the time was the only kind of theater school or music school direction. So I were you planning on going to do medicine or anything? Uh, briefly. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> realized I didn't want to spend all my time and money on school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, kind of after I graduated, wasn't really ready to go back. And do you ended education. up working in film distribution, didn't you, with uh, Cineplex for, for, for a while. So you were into films and movies as well. I mean... I liked the theater as much as the next guy, but I was not a film buff. It was just something I kind of fell into and enjoyed. Like it was in the arts and, and I had a few really good bosses that kind of kept me inspired. And I learned a lot because I ended up moving from Cineplex to like a few small distribution companies where you kind of have to handle all aspects of, yeah, um, yeah. of, it, of, of the industry. So that was really cool. And then I eventually did uh, film PR for several years, which helps a bit being in music where I can kind of, I, I understand a bit of that world. You did veer off for a while, didn't you? Because you ended up in, in a band for what, four or five months in, in Morocco. What was the story behind that? And what did you, uh, what were you playing out there? Uh, it was, it was covers. It was a, like a residency club gig, but it was my first real experience with professional singing getting paid for it. I, um, you know, I was tiring of my job at the time and, and most of the satisfaction for singing that I was getting was karaoke stuff. And, and for some reason in this moment, um, I met well, one of them I knew previously, but there were two guys putting bands together who needed singers. So I joined these two bands and I was playing uh, cover music like once or twice a week. And then the one got a contract in Morocco. So I went from doing karaoke to once or twice a week to six nights mm. a week in a, a smoky dungeon of a bar in, in Casablanca. <laughs> um, so yeah, we did two months in Casablanca and two months in a, a tourist city south of there called uh, Agadir. Um, you, you basically spent nine years in, in film PR. So du during that time, did you think that well, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep the day job going and I'll just do, I'll just sing for, for pleasure and, and, you know, maybe in a few bands and whatever. I mean, it, it just, it seemed feasible to do both. Like I, I decreased the numbers of hours as like the, the, the current bands I was playing with at the time as they got busier and doing it more regularly became a reality. I decreased the hours of my, my film job and then it just got to a point where me and Dave, my partner, who was running the, the mm. cover band that we were doing at the time, um, we had been talking about writing for a long time. And it was with him running that band, which at that point had gotten really busy, and me holding a day job. It just didn't seem like we were going to be able to find time to be creative, especially when you're first getting into it. But for me, kind of always, like it, it takes a while to get into a creative space and you, you need a bit of air and we just didn't have that. So I was like, okay, we're going to do this. I want to quit my job. We're going to make time for it. Um, I was making enough money singing. So it's like, okay, it's worth the day cut. Let's give it a try. Yes. Well, what amazes me here that it's so obvious to anybody that isn't well deaf, but you possess a, a remarkable talent. And I find it hard to believe that during the time that you were working, well, you met Dave and you put together the, the, the gigging, the corporate wedding and private function band, that nobody, nobody ever was sat there and thought, oh my God, she's like unbelievable. You, got, you know, I, 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 mean, I can't believe that, that, that nobody heard it. You, you get the like, 
oh, you should go audition for Canadian Idol or, you know, any of those shows. Um, but you know what? I was going to say that um, yeah. toward the end. Have you ever thought about doing that? Because, you know, you, you can almost see the reaction from whoever the judges are. Well, I mean, I, I, I did. I went once or twice for the Canadian Idol thing. I think it was twice. And the second time I got through to like the first round of celebrity judges, which is non-televised or anything like that. But I mean, part of that, one, I, I wasn't gigging at the time. So I don't think I had the, maybe the stage presence or whatever the charisma they were looking for. I don't know. Um, but also you need a really good story. Like it's a TV show, right? It's not strictly about talent, though they do get incredibly talented people on those shows. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of talented people out there. So it, you know, they're looking for other stuff. <laughs> I guess I didn't <laughs> have it or something. I don't know. God, well, that's their loss. So when you, you've put the band together, the, the direction, what made you choose the direction that you, you went in? One of your quotes, we like to give balance. You have a rockier side, but we live in a groovy mid tempo music. So what made you land there as opposed to? any of the other genres when when we seriously started talking about starting an original project it was like no doubt kind of the influences we were going to draw from which was the stuff that was really pulling us in at the time um we had discovered tedeschi chuck's band um a couple years prior to that and had really been digging into um a lot of their blues influences and have been listening you know Dave is um, very knowledgeable in like classic rock and, um, you know, so I don't know, drawing from a rock, but one of the things we got from say like Tedeschi Trucks or Sharon Jones or Amy Winehouse um, or uh, um, Solomon Burke or Otis Redding is there's like, there's a warmth in that sound that, that I think is missed sometimes in like straight yeah, yeah. rock music. Um, and that just was very important to us. I mean, emotion and music and making people feel something is, is for us kind of most important. And that's, we were seeing that in those influences and, and that's kind of where we wanted to go. So your voice hasn't always had the characteristic that it, that it has now because you actually lost it at one point and when it reappeared, as you, you've said it before, it was somewhat different. You have this rasp and uh, some just basically something that you didn't have before. Yeah, I, there, there wasn't like the the grit to it for sure. And I mean, that may have come naturally with the amount I was singing anyway, but um, uh, I had like earlier as a singer, I'd always identified myself as a, uh, as a soprano. I was always really proud of like these high, high notes that I could hit. And those were the roles I always took on. Um, I often took on in musical theater, although I did love a, a good belting too. You know, I had, I always had the power in my voice. Um, and then when I did this Morocco tour, I had, first of all, I'd never sung with that much frequency in smoke. <laughs> um, didn't really know how to take care of myself. And then I, it was all fine until I got sick. And then when I got sick, um, I didn't, I was not given a chance to recover. You know, we still had to do yeah, yeah. six nights a week and I was still singing like 45, 50, sometimes 60% of the lead vocals. And so I was just, you know, throwing injury on injury with my, my voice. And by the time I left, I could barely speak, which was really, really scary. <laughs> But wow. there was no damage. Everything was good. I just, yeah, had to learn to take better care of, of it. So, so the the band getting together in twenty seven and literally since the beginning, you you've been on a mission. I mean, your work ethic is significant. I mean, you know, I look back through some of the the tours and where you've been and you know how often you've been there and and there are times when you you know just getting on a plane going to europe doing two dates coming back going to canada then get get on another plane going to the to the us it's it, it takes a lot out of you doesn't it yeah last year in particular was crazy it was the first time we were doing um 
we had been doing Europe for a few years, but it was the first time we were doing Europe, plus some stuff at home in Canada. Plus, we had started working with the U- U.S. booking agency, and they they definitely filled our schedule, and we wanted to make as much of it happen as possible. I mean, it, getting in front of people is, yeah, yeah. is key. So, um, And a lot of it was really cool, interesting stuff. So, yeah, we, we definitely like, flew in well, and what out was for it? a festival in, in Germany. <laughs> 96 shows, 10 countries, 89 cities, and that doesn't include the the support slot that you did with uh, Robert John and the and the wreck. Yeah, it's another. I mean, that is <laughs> that, that is that is seriously impressive. Um, what was also equally impressive, again, if you go back and look at the comments, because I went back and looked at the, the the comments and the people that were writing, you know, about uh, the gigs, or they'd seen you, or they'd never seen you before. There wasn't one negative comment anywhere i mean it was all it was all oh my you know this is fantastic she's unbelievable they're simply the best thing i've seen all year you know you got to go and see them i mean and again it it takes something for you to be able to maintain that level of uh, of, of consistency over that period of um of time well i think for the band as a whole it was a pretty good i mean by the time the end of the year came around we were so locked in like that which was great. I think it really reflected on on how we got along on stage together and how we performed. <clears throat> and again, because I went through what I went through with my with losing my voice way back when, um, I do have techniques in place to kind of maintain, which um, you know, running is yeah, vocal exercises. Work. Yeah, and I had you know very little incident last year where I was felt like I was struggling, which was very nice. It, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so to, to follow on, this yeah. is, I mean, this is a big year. We've seen the single releases. Uh, there's an album on the way. There is a, a lot of touring to come as well. How important a year is this for the band? And what would you consider to be a successful outcome for the end of the year? I, I mean, our, our biggest goal is to just reach more people with what we're doing. Um, so, you know, part of that is, is, um, stepping up in terms of, of some of the venues and cities we play when we come back to the UK in the fall. Um, we're playing a lot more major cities than we did last time, which is nice to see. Um, and then, I mean, the elusive online following that is, I think, especially difficult for, Maybe a band that lives in our genre, although I don't know what it, we're, we're such a we're a cross genre band, I think. But you does know, that help you? That I don't know <laughs> because I, you know, I had the, I asked I forget who it was I asked this question now. Oh, it was somebody called Jane Getter, who is um, who's an incredible guitar player from from New York, and she came out. She said, "Well, I'm cross between Led Zeppelin, the Mahavishnu Orchestra, the this, the that." I said, "But." Isn't the danger that you're trying to appeal to too many audiences and you're actually missing one? Maybe we do because, you know, we've kind of come up in the in the blues scene, which we love and appreciate and has done a lot for us. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, we continue to do a lot of stuff in that in that genre. Um, we worry sometimes that we're disappointing people who are looking for like a straight up 12 bar blues. It's just not what we do. Um, but I do think, I think that our music does belong in some, you know, like there's some, there's a bit of folk, there's definitely tons of soul in there. And how do we reach kind of beyond the, the blues fans and, and find the other fans who I think would, would respond well to what we do, but just finding out how to, to get in front of them. I think that's more of the challenge than like, I don't think we're reaching far enough or we don't know how to. Um, yeah, yeah. as opposed to yeah. everybody you play it to you know so i uh, you know i played the i mean on the single on spotify i played it to a few people and they go yeah yeah who's that what's that and the more people that hear it the more people that like it i mean it is really that simple isn't it you know if, if so. you I get it so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because if you look at those two albums again you get back and you look at the reviews both of them drew plenty of acclaim from critics and you know 30 40 years ago that might have been enough but now it isn't because you know social media exists and 
you know, I made a point of this. If you look at the amount of things vying for people's attention in music and entertainment, it's quite possible that with people's attention spans, which are usually seconds to minutes maximum, they simply miss you. Yeah, it's it's a it's a different world for music for sure. Um, but I do feel so. Like how 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 are you going to get? How are you going to make sure that that doesn't happen? I don't. We're still figuring it out. But you know, I think one of the things that we don't do a lot on social media right now, um, which I would I would like to do, I hope people would respond to it, is maybe being a bit more personal. Um, you know, maybe yeah. Logs from the road. We have our busted up awesome bus when we're touring in North America and kind of giving people a bit of that That's perspective. That's perfect. Um, yeah, and then that is a perfect. That's a perfect thing because the old uh, what do you call it? old Buster? He broke yeah, down, Buster. didn't he? Oh gosh, <laughs> yeah, it was harrowing. It was. <laughs> but the small. other thing is, you were doing the driving. I've yeah. seen. I've seen for you. Do, so is that a is that a an always thing? You always driving? Not me. I don't drive the bus. The guys drive right. the bus, but we don't have a driver right now in North America. Like the boys, the boys take it on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I it's mean, it's just you, a little bumpy, except for when his wheels come off and then he's. You did work in PR for nine years, so you know the importance of getting the message out and the, the continuity of it. Yeah, yeah um, I mean, TikTok and Instagram weren't really a thing when I was doing film PR, so it's, you know, <laughs> we're figuring so, it out. So, when you get on tour this uh, this year on the road, are you going to have a uh, you're going to have somebody designated to do the filming? I mean, we're talking about it. John, John, our keyboard player, is the newest, the newest member of the band and the youngest. So we feel like that that should be on his shoulders. <laughs> and going back to the album, uh, when is the album due? Uh, so it'll be this summer. Uh, we're still, we have a date in mind. We're just not quite ready to to throw it out there. But uh, and the title of is the is the title been published yet? Uh, the title will be Shepherd. Which right. is a, a lyric from one of the one of the tunes that's already out there. We'll have um What's the relevance of the title? It's a lyric from uh for all no, it's from Colors. Yeah, it's a lyric from a, a tune we're gonna be putting out, sorry, called Colors, which we absolutely love. And um the lyric is a she the shepherd a shepherd with none of her sheep, which we just thought was a really cool image. So we're kind of using that that imagery. Um and yeah, I mean, we're kind of, we're, we're doing things differently this year. So I think, or with this album. So I think that f reflects a bit of our situation too. Like we're doing, uh, we're doing self, self-producing and, um, we're putting and mixing this on this album. So, uh, yeah, I think it kind of reflects that. <laughs> experiment. There's, there's always been, well, in the album so far, I thought a, a healthy variation of the, of the content. I mean, there's no two tracks really that appear the, the same. So you, you simply <laughs> wouldn't get bored and you'd stay there going, well, I wonder what's, what's coming next then. You know, we've got a bit of gospel, a bit of blues. So okay. is this, is this format going to follow? I would say so. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was like we throw in a little bit of funk kind of, we did that on the last album too. Um, it's a nice collection of tunes. I'm, I'm feeling really good about it. Um, you know, we've got a couple of the rockier ones like Holler. Um, it's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. Thank you. I played. I, I when I when I played it, I think I must have played it three or four times on the on the loop. You know, while I was sat there, and yeah, this is really great. This is really great. Tell me, how did you find the reaction to you in the different countries that you have been in over uh, you know over the last? A uh, couple of years. Yeah, I, I mean, it's all it's all pretty positive. You start small for the most part. Um, we were blown away. Our first proper tour ever, aside from um, you know a handful of things we were doing at home, was uh, touring Europe in January and February of 2020, and we did not know what to expect. Right? Nobody knows us out there, and it was small clubs, but we the the response and the attendance was kind of mind blowing at the time. We we're like, wow. <laughs> Who are these people who are kind of willing to take a chance on something they don't really, um, they don't really know? Uh, so that was that was awesome. And then um, we did the UK for the first time last 
uh, October. And that was, again, we weren't sure what to expect there. And the turnout and the response was awesome. You know, our, probably our, our worst attended was still not, you know, it was a half full room in, in London and, you know, the major city on a Monday. So like, yeah, I, can't, yeah. I can't really complain about that. Um, so overall, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing pockets in the States where we're really reaching people. Um, so overall the response is good. It's just, um, finding a way to spread the word. Brilliant. And what about you? I mean, because not, not many people know too much about you. Not in fact, not many people know too much about any of you actually. So yeah. what do you do <laughs> apart from music? What are your, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do Well, on the day off? Like for better or for worse, this, this band takes up most of the time in our house. It's, you know, Dave and I run the band. It's most of what we talk about um, and most of what we work on. But, you know, we have a nice group of friends so going out and, you know, when, when we can, checking out some of our friends playing around town. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I should have more hobbies. But um, Are you a beer drinker? Do you like beer? I don't or like beer. I, I like beer on a hot day. A cold beer is pretty awesome. Um, I really like dry wine and uh, a margarita, you know, a fancy, oh, yeah, yeah. Any, any fancy cocktail. Oh, you'll have to get down to Sammy's. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. You'll have to get to get down to Sammy Hagar's place down in Cabo Wabo Cantina. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's one and of those in Las Vegas. <laughs> Uh, you've obviously got a bit of a thing about art because I've been looking at that oh, yeah. picture that's, that's, that's behind you. That's, <laughs> a, that's, um, that's <laughs> it's a friend of ours, uh, a guy we know who's a, a comedian, and uh, he did a show years ago where he, he was kind of com combining art with a comedy show, and at that time he was writing kind of a musical comedy show, so some friends of ours, some musician friends, were playing with him. So we went to it, and these are... These are not original, they're reprints, but he did this like really cool special, like it shows all the the dimensions of the paint in the reprint. And it's, uh, well, I'll show you the other one too, if I'm going to turn it the right way. It's Bessie Smith and Robert Johnson as, a, right. as a goat and as um, a giraffe. And we have a well, bunch of fabulous. others around the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so last thing, mm -hmm. which sort of puts you on the spot a bit. Uh oh, okay. Are you too good to fail? <laughs> no. Really? I mean, it's a, it's a serious question because, um, you know, as I said before we, we started recording, you know, you, whenever you hear you for the, the first time, it, it, it almost demands that you stop and listen, you know, so, but we see this so often with, with, people who you think they have got to be huge what what is wrong with the world so are you confident that you will reach your ultimate objective i'm going to say yes because i think without that confidence you probably won't get there so <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant so let's say yes 